the motorcycle is Wes Cooley, two-time champion of superbike competition and one of the finest riders ever to have straddled a high-powered two-wheeled racing machine. This blonde, easygoing California native is making his final shakedown runs on the motorcycles he'll be racing at up to 160 miles an hour throughout the upcoming season. It was also here 12 years ago that Wes Cooley, at the tender age of 13, rode a motorcycle competitively for the very first time. But there's a special urgency here today. Cooley and the Suzuki Yoshimura crew have their sights set on Daytona Beach, Florida, and the most prestigious event in motorcycle competition. Throughout his highly successful career, this young champion has never won on the steep banks of Daytona's super speedway. I've got a big smile on my face. Everything's worked out real good today. Uh, I know the track, and we picked up some times, good times, and uh, so, a yeah, good day. Daytona bound, here we come. Winner, both days. Daytona. In the language of motorcycling, just the word evokes the spectacle and excitement that Indianapolis means to automobiles and the Kentucky Derby to thoroughbreds. Every March, enthusiasts from all over the world descend on this oceanfront resort for a week-long renewal of the rites of spring. The sun, the sand, and the surf. And of course, the great tradition of competition dating back to a time when they raced along the beach and through the streets of America's premier city of motorsports. But as the speeds kept increasing, racing on the beach became more and more hazardous until motorcycles eventually followed stock cars onto the fabulous Daytona Motor Speedway. In this unbridled arena of pure speed, the technological sophistication of these machines are constantly reaching new heights. Pops Yoshimura is perhaps the best known builder of these highly advanced racing machines. The alliance between Cooley and the Yoshimuras has grown into a close relationship of professionals dedicated to a common goal. Pop's son, Fujio, is Cooley's chief mechanic and also his closest comrade. He's been with us five years and um, uh, we really started off, uh, what do you call that, like a um, good, you know, friendship, you know, friendly ship type, you know, thing, you know, and uh, he was still young, and we were still learning a lot about the Suzuki's and, you know, chassis development and all that. So we really grew up together, in other words, you know. So I feel towards Wes like my brother or something, you know, and I'm sure he, he feels the same way. Beyond the friendship, though, racing requires an intimate communication if rider, crew, and machine are going to perform to their utmost. Of Cooley's two stiffest competitors, fast Freddie Spencer rides for rival team Honda. At 19, Spencer is one of the upcoming young masters of American road racing. The other racer Cooley will have to beat is Graham Crosby on the second Yoshimura Suzuki. This hard-riding New Zealander made his American racing debut here last year when he charged from dead last starting position to steal the race away from Spencer. A star-studded international field is set to resolve the first major question of this Daytona Superbike confrontation. Who will start this 100-mile grind from the coveted pole position? The track is now open for qualifying. Each rider is required to complete five timed laps fastest of which establishes his qualifying speed. Favorites to take the pole include New Zealand's Graham Crosby, the defending champion in this event, along with Yoshimura R&D teammate, Californian Wes Cooley. Also gives a good shot at the pole, Team Honda's number 19, Wonder Boy, Freddie Smith. As the riders head out for their final qualifying attempt, let's take a look at the twisting infield section of this super speedway from over Cooley's shoulder. Road course, 
a series of sweeping 180 degree bends, testing braking and handling to the maximum. In addition to the many formidable obstacles to any championship effort, Wes Cooley carries with him a special burden. As the back of his helmet announces to anyone who may need to know, Cooley is a diabetic. There was one race in 1977 where I ran the race and I used up all the sugars that were available in my body. And it did affect me. I did drop back quite a few places. I had to pull into the pits. But it really hasn't been very much of a problem. I've done a few things for the uh, American Diabetic Association before, trying to help kids out that are worried about it. You know, I just take it as something that's part of my life, and that's the way I have to treat it, and go from there. coming in and listen to this the suzuki teammates have posted identical times two minutes seven point eight two six thousandths of a second at nearly 109 miles per hour the suzuki share the pole third fastest team honda's freddie spencer nearly a second off the pace welcome to the daytona superbike 100 the biggest production motorcycle road race in america We've got a sensational battle shaping up with a talent-packed front five. Sitting in the front two spots are the Yoshimura R&D Suzukis, which have been the dominant force here at Daytona over the years. The pole sitter, Graham Crosby, one of the most accomplished four-stroke racers in the world. He won this race a year ago from dead last starting spot. Uh, well, you want to be in, in, inside here, you know, in about five minutes' time or ten minutes' time. It's quite interesting what happens. Well, the devil comes out, you know, little little lumps appear in the, in the helmet where the old horns start to stick out. Next to him is Wes Cooley, the reigning king of American superbike racing. The son of a motorcycle racing family, Cooley has been with Pops Yoshimura, the man who builds these bikes, since back in 73. Yeah, everything's great. I'm just waiting right now. You know, I've got the pre-race jitters. <laughs> they go away as soon as the, fire, the engines all start up. So we should be all right. Starting in the middle of row one will be fast Freddy Spencer on his team Honda machine. At 19, Spencer is the wonder boy of American road racing. <laughs> After the years it took developing these machines, the months of preparation and practice, this is what it all comes down to. This is why they've all come. In a few moments, the green flag will drop, hurtling the pack into turn one. In the brief seconds before, each rider lives that moment a thousand times. The fanfare is over. No more pre-race interviews. No camaraderie. The riders are alone atop their machines, amidst the high-pitched scream of their engines, awaiting the signal that will launch them on 100 grueling miles of racing. first of 26 trips through the Daytona infield, hanging his right knee out like an outrigger. A picture of road racing form. Daytona, on a motorcycle, is an all-out affair. 
The chicane at the end of the back straight serves to slow the riders down before they head back out onto the banking. The big thing about Daytona, I think, is that uh, since it is such a fast track, things can happen so fast. You have to keep your mental concentration up more than anything else. It's not really a physical track because there's a lot of straightaways where you have time to relax and concentrate on what you have to do, breaking points for the next turn. With the top competitors all turning very quick times, each rider must look for an edge that will break the race open in his favor. strategy because the bikes are so close and the riders are so close and it's like a NASCAR race you know it's like Petty you know the way he won the 500 race here you just have to figure out some way to get some distance between you and the other riders because here the drafting is so important especially with the head 60 miles per hour three riders all trying to occupy the same spot and it's Crosby grabbing the lead in turn one a breathtaking outside pass well that's the sort of intimidating aggressive racing that helps Crosby race a year ago, a race he had to start dead last because of a technicality. While under 100 miles, he had scorched past the entire field. Now it's Crosby and Suzuki out front again at Daytona, but the challengers, Cooley and Spencer, are bird-dogging the New Zealanders every move through the infield. Knifing down into that left-hand dog leg, Cooley in second place keeps the gas on that split second longer, and Crosby's lead is chopped in half. Crosby paying Cooley no mind. On the gas hard, out of the right-hander. Crosby, Cooley, Spencer, with Eddie Lawson on a Kawasaki in four. Even riders for the same team know there can only be one winner at the end of the race. Each knows what he has to do and who he has to beat to come out on top. Well, we would have tried for a, a one-two, obviously, but, uh, you know, Freddie, uh, Eddie Lawson, you know, you can't discount those guys for sure. It's intensity times three at Daytona. The leaders in a virtual dead heat. That trip across start finish. And in turn one, it's Wes Cooley who emerges with the narrowest of margins. Freddie Spencer and Graham Crosby. 24-year-old Wes Cooley's considerable and lucrative racing success has interrupted for the time being his college career. So as Cooley works his considerable magic hauling that big Suzuki down for turn two, it's worth noting that the kid has a lot on the ball. And to the extent that smarts win races, he certainly ranks as a favorite here today. Cooley with Spencer and Crosby in tow, putting a lap rider behind him as he continues his victory quest in the Daytona Superbike 100. The legend which is Daytona takes on new meaning every time racers take to the track. And in the great tradition of this super speedway, we've seen Cooley, Crosby, and Spencer in a constant battle for the lead. But there's still a lot of racing to come and there's just no way of predicting what can happen under these all-out conditions. You can't ever tell what's going to happen at any particular racetrack. They're all different every time. Uh, there's a lot of variables involved with racing, and I had high hopes. I always have high hopes when I come to Daytona. It's been kind of a jinx for me. I've been trying to win this race for a long time, and Coming just hopefully it'll work out good for me this time. Looks like a three-rider dash to the checkered flag. Meanwhile, on pit road down the factory Honda, the refueling crew swarms over Spencer's machine, hoping to replenish the fuel supply and get him out more quickly than his Suzuki-mounted adversaries. So, for the first time today, leaders Graham Crosby and Wes Cooley lead this race free for the moment from the tenacious onslaught of Freddie Spencer. Wait, a problem for Honda, a fire on the number 19 machine. Spencer 
Williams has left off the flaming bike. He's okay. The fire crew is extinguishing the blade. Ever ready, Freddie climbs right back in the saddle. A bizarre pit incident. There were no injuries and apparently little damage to the machine. And now the Suzuki Mountain leaders, unaware of what has happened to their foe, are about to entrust their own fate to the Yoshimura crew. The two Suzukis are in the pits together. The bikes are stopped. The fuel going in thus far without incident. Meanwhile, on the track, Eddie Lawson, with a pit stop still to come, has grabbed the lead. Crosby waits impatiently as the tank is topped off. Crosby is away. But it will be Cooley who gets out onto the track first as the Yoshimura crew performs with it. With the pit stops out of the way, it's a no-holds-barred charge to the checkered flag. There are a few subtleties of strategy at this point. The idea is to take the lead and keep it. And the way to do that is to go faster than everyone else. I think as far as the speed and as how fast we can go, it's all relative to the handling of the motorcycle, and the tires that we use. Uh, I, I don't mind going 160 miles an hour. It, everything comes up quick. Uh, just like everything else, it's a matter of being mentally prepared for it and knowing what you're going to be doing. Uh, if you start worrying about making mistakes or doing something wrong at that kind of speeds, you're going to end up getting hurt. I put it as, as a horse with blinders on. You look straight ahead and you don't let anything outside distract you at all. And that's about the best attitude I think you can have towards the situation. As far as in 76 with that particular crash that I had here, it was the fact that after 200 miles, I lost the concentration for a split second, and that's what I ended up doing, was falling down. You can't, you can't break concentration at all. You have to be with it 100% all the time. He's done his apprenticeship, and he's fallen, and he's banged himself up, and I'll tell you, it hurts you very bad to take your boy to the hospital and see with a broken wrist or a broken, uh, you know, bones, but... Um, I also believe, too, is that <clears throat> they have to learn for themselves. They have to do what they think they want to do. And I always encourage the West to, to do what he wants to do. It's a very phenomenal thing, though. Most people don't know it. He was three years into pre-med and doing very well. And he had to make a decision. And all of a sudden, one day, he said to me, I want to be a professional racer. So maybe we lost out on a good doctor and got a great racer. I don't know. Where once there were three, now there are but two. Cooley and Crosby playing a dramatic duet against a backdrop of racing history here at Daytona. Lap after lap, they have tested each other. Cooley, number 34, and Crosby, number 316, are side by side. And Cooley retakes the lead. Spencer, now a distant third, victim of a pit stop fire. Eddie Lawson is out with mechanical problems. And the Suzuki teammates, Wes Cooley, the leader, and Graham Crosby, are left to settle this one between them. Cooley in command at the moment, hoping to make up for his disappointment of a year ago when he started second in this race, but retired after just nine laps to finish 44. With only a few laps to go, Cooley's first Daytona victory is well in his grasp. He must only hold off Graham Crosby to realize this long sought after dream. Cooley won the American Superbike Championship. As far as my job right now, my job is again to win the Superbike title for 1981. I was fortunate enough to do it in 79 and 80. And I think in 1981, I'd like to do that, plus win the Formula One class in the United States. Suzuki team's dominance of this event is absolutely remarkable. These two riders have run just this close. They posted identical qualifying laps to the thousands of the second. And now, with one lap to go, they appear certain to sweep the top two spots in this most prestigious of American Superbike races. But the question remains, which Suzuki will it be? Cooley, sneaking a look over his shoulder, Perhaps yep. pondering some remaining bit of strategy in this the final lap. A motorcycle enthusiast for 18 of his 24 years, Cooley has fixed his sights on the biggest prize of all, Victory Circle at Daytona. Cooley demonstrating masterful control, but Crosby works within striking distance. The pair knifing through the infield for the final time. Cooley, though six years younger than Crosby, is a 10-year veteran. Loads of Daytona experience that he's hoping will pay a checkered flag premium half a lap from now. The back markers make way, moving over for the flying twosome who will decide this race between them. Cooley holding his advantage through the infield, but Crosby will have an opportunity to draft on the banking the last time around, perhaps setting up
setting up another of those Daytona slingshot passes. Exiting the infield. Cooley with a bold move to the outside. Momentarily traps Crosby behind left rider. That could prove to be the key maneuver of this race. They're on the west banking for the last time. 160 miles per hour setting up for a final fateful trip through that backstretch chicane. Cooley hits his line on a dime. Crosby has to follow him in. They flick right. Now back to the left. Looking for good. Whoa! Crosby almost slipped. The rear wheel slid around as he got back on the throttle too quickly in his haste to catch Cooley. Cooley is on the front shoot. The bit in his teeth. Crosby recovers for one final sprint trying to catch his teammate. But Yoshimura R&D Suzuki crew goes crazy. Plus, Cooley wins it. They started side by side with identical qualifying times. And after 100 miles of racing, Cooley defeats Crosby by a margin of just 10 feet. The average speed over 107 miles. For Pops Yoshimura and Yoshimura Racing, it was the best day imaginable. With their two bikes taking a commanding first second sweep. For Wes Cooley, the reigning champion of superbike racing, it was a great personal victory and the fulfillment of a lifelong goal to win Daytona. We didn't really care, I don't think, who came first, as long as everybody was safe and everything, and that's the way it ended up.